All right, guys. So we uh, we started with the 50-50 position. And we're talking about trying to stand up and using the hip grip for control. And obviously, once we were standing, we talked about the back takes and the potential of the pommel to attack heel hooks. But let's talk about the strategy I use to try and expose the heel from the 50-50 position. <clears throat> so when we're playing here, right, what I'm looking to do is really turn inside and try and clear this knee to a safe space. And while it's floating on the hips, I am in danger here. So what I want to do, I want to place my thumb inside the knee here. I want to try and get an inside grip with the thumb. I'm going to take my secondary hand and put it on top of the toes. And this frame here and this frame on the toes are going to give me the ability to switch in. So I try and separate the feet and pull my knee to the floor. Right? Obviously Isaac's been pretty kind to me here. It might not be one fluent motion, but we're pushing the toes, I'm pushing the ankle out, and I start to start to pull my knee to the floor here. And once we have these legs separated, I'm gonna try and drag my top foot over so my legs gonna drift cross body here. The beauty of bringing this across right is my knee safe while it's on the ground here. If Isaac were to start trying to pull the knee back into a dangerous zone, we've got this secondary leg as a bit of a block. So although my heel on this side potentially looks in danger, if you were to pull it back in, our secondary leg cross body is really a counter force here to make it difficult for him to pull this knee back in. So I'm really extending with my right and I'm trying to turn my hips out and pull my knee back so it's like a counter force on this leg. From here, I'm trying to keep the legs separated as best I can and I'm going to try and pop up over the top. And as I do that, my left leg is going to drift cross body here to a, a much safer area, right? So once we're here, I'm looking to turn up, secure the second leg, and cross my feet over the top. So you see my left foot has gone from the 50-50 to cross body here. Now we've got control over both legs. Our legs are safe, and we're free to start attacking here. Isaac's probably gonna recross his feet here. Obviously trying to protect this leg from the inside. I would say he would keep the right foot on top, because that's keeping the bottom foot safe here. So we have to start working to separate the feet. And as you do that, I would try and keep control of the second leg. So I would have some form of control here just in case they did bring this leg back and start separating my feet and kick me away with this foot. And start clearing that secondary leg. So I like to control this leg by holding onto it. So now if Isaac's trying to free that leg, it's very difficult. And what we can do, we can start to separate the legs. So obviously again, it's gonna take a bit of a battle here, but that's the goal. We're trying to separate these feet here. So I'm trying to push underneath the hip. And once I separate, I can stay with my head in between the legs. So obviously, if I went back to trying to dig the heel here, Isaac will cross his feet again, or he'll start kicking and we'll have trouble. So I secure the second leg, I separate, and I put my knee to the, my head to the floor and try and pull this secondary leg up. So now as Isaac's trying to protect his, his uh, exposed heel here, it's very difficult, right? And we can start to turn back onto our side, pick up the heel, and fall back to attack the legs. As you can see, we land in a position where Isaac's leg that I'm attacking is relatively straight, but again, we know how to bend that leg. We bend it by putting weight onto the heel and bringing our hips towards the sky here. So this is sort of the battle that takes place, right? What can be difficult, if we both have the same strategy here, we both start trying to separate the legs, do the same to me, we both can potentially lose complete contact of each other and sometimes we escape the position, right? So it can be a bit of a tricky battle, but we're trying to make the space to fight without obviously both pushing ourselves away. So let's look at it from a different angle. So we're here, what I'm trying to do again, trying to get this knee inside safely. So we're taking our thumb and putting it under our outside knee. So our outside hand under the outside knee. We're trying to grip the toes of their outside leg. We're trying to push that away and open their legs as we start turning onto the side here. So you can see I've still got pretty good control over this leg. So once we've separated the legs, my outside leg is gonna come cross body. 
But again, remember, we're not going to do that until we get our inside leg to the floor. So when I was here, I wouldn't open my feet and try and bring a cross body because he's going to attack the heel hook. And because my knee's on top of his hips, we're in danger, right? So once we've opened the legs, I'm going to patiently try and get this knee to the floor. If I like hanging onto it here, we're having a bit of a battle when I'm manipulating my hips to try and secure this knee to the floor. Once it's safe, I can bring this leg cross body. I don't want to bring it too wide because we might lose control over their knee. And that's where we start losing the position, right? So once we're here, I'm trying to really create a wedge behind his knee and drag this leg cross body here. Once I've got that cross body, I feel more free to start coming up on top of them. And my secondary leg safe again, because if he's trying to pull it back in, we've got that other leg fighting here. We've got another angle to push up, we've got that counter for us. So once we've created this angle, we're coming on top and we're allowing our foot, the 50-50 inside foot, to drift cross body. So it's coming up, it's coming over, and we're recrossing our feet to secure the position. I keep my feet pretty tight here, and I really try and sit heavy on the hips. Obviously, in this position, if it's slippery or sweaty and I'm a bit loose, again, he might get his feet out and kick me away. So when we're here, I keep my feet crossed, and I'm really trying to sit on their hips. I control the secondary legs, and now Isaac's trying to move here, trying to escape, pretty tough. You see, I've got three points of control on the ground. This pose, my left knee and my right knee. Now we just need to start separating the feet. So to separate the feet, I take my post away and I put my whole body weight behind this leg. And once I've separated the legs, I plant my head on the floor. Because obviously, if I were to let go of this secondary leg, you could use that leg to start kicking my hands and fighting and making it very difficult for me to attack the inside. So once I separate, I put my knee to the floor. Now as I try to use that secondary leg to fight, but it's all locked up. And we can start to turn back onto the side and expose this heel. Again, typically we've landed with a pretty straight leg, the leg we're attacking, but we do know how to finish that position, right? We know how to re-bend the leg. We bend it with weight underneath. So I start to sink onto the shoulder and bring my hips towards this guy. So with the 50-50 guard position when we're attacking from, I guess the main thing is we're always trying to work our inside 50-50 leg to a safe position and attack. Not only does that keep us safe, but it also means they're out of range to hand fight and mess with us here. So really I'd say in the modern game of 50-50, that's the real battle here. Who can get dominant inside knee space and expose the heel? Again, sometimes what happens if we're both thinking the same thing, it becomes difficult to uh, create an angle and hang on. But scissoring our legs is going to keep that very tight.